not all your money in one thing. That would be all your eggs in one basket. The federal government can do whatever they want. Tax you or we will fine you, whatever they want to call it, if you don't sign up for insurance. But if we don't balance the budget, which is a huge thing for the government to do, those are ramifications. We can do whatever we want. The opinions and recommendations expressed by Dan are his own and do not necessarily represent the opinions of this station or any of the show's sponsors. American Family Radio Network, Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. It's great to be here. 866 392 98. We're going to get right back to the phones. I better look at the market, so make sure something dramatic's not happening. Nothing dramatic's happening. Dow's up 52. We were down 136 uh, yesterday at the close, so we've got some uh, ground to make up yet, but the Dow is up 50 right now. Let me go to Robert. Robert calling us from Texas. Hey, Robert. Hey, Dan. I, I knew that when I was trying to sign up for Obamacare, they were going to be stuck in a queue, but not when I called your show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good thing. That means there's a lot of people trying to call. So, Oh, but, man. Anyway, Happy New Year. Same to you. Thank you. Hey, this morning I heard about uh, <clears throat> this thing called a Bitcoin, B-I-T coin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You heard about that? Oh, sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Well, I, you know, I think that, uh, so the, so a Bitcoin for anybody listening that doesn't know what it is, it's a, um, it's a, a electronic currency is basically what it is. It's an electronic currency. And, um, here's, I, I think that it could get some legs. I think there's a lot of people that are going to make a lot of money until it does. My problem with it right now is that there are over just over 40 Bitcoin lookalikes out there. Everybody trying to cash in and trying to make, you know, make some money off of this and see what works. Uh, so, uh, will the dust settle? And th- you know, out of the ashes, will there be a single uh, Bitcoin or a single electronic currency that is going to rise to the top? I think there will be. I don't know that it's going to be the original Bitcoin uh, and the way it was designed, although that has the best chance. I do think that um, there are organizations like the International Monetary Organization, the World Bank, and maybe some uh, other central banks around the world that are going to come out with their own electronic currency. So I, I um, you know, it's extremely volatile as an investment. It's, you know, I mean, it loses, it'll take a 500, uh, you know, 500% swing on any given day. So it's very, very volatile. Uh, Most investors are getting into it to try to make some quick money. So, um, but there is talk, there is talk right now of four countries that hate America that are talking about trading their oil. I don't remember all of them. One is Angola. One, uh, they're, they're mostly, uh, African nations that, um, want to trade in Bitcoin. They want, in other words, they don't want the American dollar to denominate their oil. So, you know, I don't know if that's going to get any legs, but it's possible. Uh, China is already, uh, building up some supplies of Bitcoin coin, but they've taken uh, huge hits on it. So I, I don't know. I'm not an investor in it. I wouldn't be. Frankly, it's difficult to know which one to invest in. As I said, there's over 40 of them out there. And um, so it's a little bit uh, difficult. I think we got to wait and see how the dust settles. And we all may be trading everything in Bitcoin, um, you know, in the next five years. Okay. So, all all right. right. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. And remember, folks, when we think about electronic currency, what do you think your when your credit card, when you use your credit card, when you go to Amazon or eBay or whatever you do, or if you're shopping at Walmart online, that's electronic currency. You're using a credit card. It's the same, you know, the same principles. Uh, let me go to Bill in West Virginia. Hey, Bill. Good morning. Good morning. How's everything? Good. I just had a question, comment about uh, the Obamacare and the insurance and all this. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm currently employed through the uh, 
school systems. Okay. And uh, I have you know, the state insurance, PEIA insurance. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty, you know, it's decent insurance. Uh, here in my last uh, two paid paychecks, my insurance has went up forty eight dollars out of each one of the checks. You know, almost a hundred bucks. Mm. Uh, and that's that's only happened right here since the Obamacare has kicked in. Uh, you know, that's I, I don't understand why that is affecting us that's already got insurance and I know other people that had insurance that their insurance companies actually dropped them. I would be one of those. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, here's what's happening. Uh, the reason why that is, uh, Bill, uh, there is a, a lot of tax that is associated um, on insurance companies right now. So Obamacare has instituted a number of different fees and taxes that are being charged to insurance companies. And I talked about this, uh, this, this, I think I might have even mentioned it yesterday. So obviously that's going to get passed on. I mean, it, so the insurance companies now are paying certain fees, or I'll call them tax, certain tax on certain aspects of the insurance that they supply. That gets passed on, obviously, to your employer, in your case, the school district. School district's going to pass it on to you. Everybody in the nation is impacted by higher taxes from Obamacare. I know they're not calling it taxes. Republicans aren't calling it a tax. Nobody's calling it a tax because that's a dirty word. But the fact of the matter is, this is scheduled or slated to raise $8 billion to help pay for Obamacare. That won't even pay for the website for Obamacare. But nonetheless, all of these things are going to continue to rise between now and 2017 And all of that is going to get passed on to the consumer. We're all going to be paying. It is absolutely ludicrous that we all got sucked in to this idea when President Obama says, not only will nobody lose their health care, it's going to be cheaper. Well, I mean, he even gave a number. I forget what it was. I don't know. Maybe you remember, Devin. Your, I, I don't. I think it was like your, your premiums are going to go down something like twenty five hundred hours. I think per household a year uh, when this is implemented, it's gone up more than that. So it is. It is just insanity, and that's what it is, Bill. So it's not a shot at your school districts. Got nothing to do with them. Uh, I'm going to believe they're not marking anything up. They're not making any changes. But they've got to pass some of their additional cost on to all of you guys. And that's exactly what is happening. And that's happening around the country. So, and the worst part about it is it's hurting the, the lower income people, the worst. And secondly, it's having, it is not yet, but it will have a dramatic impact on the economy because bill from West Virginia now has, um, a hundred dollars a month, $1,200 a year, less discretionary income. That's $1,200 a year that Bill can't spend into the economy. Multiply that by a million people. It's a lot of money that is not going into the economy. Anytime something happens that hurts discretionary income, you've all heard uh, John F. Kennedy Um, Ronald Reagan, other presidents that believed that cutting the tax base is going to increase and do better for the economy because people are going to have more to spend. The more people spend in the economy, the more sales tax they pay, it helps the states. The more people to spend in the economy, the more the economy thrives, which creates job, which creates more payroll tax, and the government ends up getting more revenue as a result of those lower taxes. This administration and all of Capitol Hill hasn't figured that out yet, although it's been proven and we know it works. 
They continue to have to pay for their out of control spending because of their unwillingness to to uh, shrink the size of government and decrease spending. Let me go to David in Oklahoma. Hey, David. Hello. How are you, David? Good morning. Good morning. What's your question, David? Um, I don't really have, have so much a question as okay. a comment. All um, right. I just wanted to say about Obamacare and everything since Obama's come into office, my family, uh, on a whole, has never been affected by an administration more negatively in my life hmm. from his stimulus package when he first came into office which I was a part of the construction industry then. Mm. Uh, but and I knew when they said that, that the stimulus package was going to be going south of the border because that's uh, who's running our construction industry now. Mm-hmm. And, I'm not, and I'm not saying that in a prejudice tone because uh, some of the best guys I've worked alongside are, are, have been foreigners, mm-hmm. but uh, that are taking over our workforce there. But mm-hmm. and as far as the Obamacare, since that since this whole that whole thing has started, uh, my my dad is a veteran, and, and I served in Iraq, and he's unable to get his meds like he used to. Uh, and my cousin, actually, uh, her husband uh, was unable to get his meds and ended up committing suicide. And I've heard uh, uh, numerous stories like this that, uh, and let's face it, all Ob- Obamacare really is is a tax. Yeah. If they came, if they came out and told the American people that they was going to raise our taxes, uh, uh, you know what the Obamacare was going to cost us, the the American people would be outraged. Yeah. But uh, instead, they give us this tax and make it look like we're getting something out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I won't ever take part in it mm. in one way or another. I don't care what, what they say. If you make it law or whatever, it, uh, I'm just, I'm not going to have nothing to do with it. I'm just waiting for the man to be impeached. Well, you know, it, it and I'm with you, uh, David, it, it is sad. And you know, the average wait now for a veteran and VA benefits, 125 days, uh, to get, to get meds. Uh, that's the average wait. And now there are statistics coming out, and I think we're going to see these exposed by the end of January, by the end of this month. I think we're going to see this exposed, that there are veterans that are um, dying because of that 125-day uh, wait that ends up being uh, um, you know, 8 to 10 months to 12 months. Uh, there are going to be cancer patients that might have lived. Uh, there are cancer patients they're saying are dying as a result of not being able to get the meds in time and waiting so long. And you just bring that out. I mean, we're, we're, this is, we haven't even begun to see this. And I, I hope, I, I know this won't happen because it usually doesn't. But I hope that people remember way back when, as I began to talk about Obamacare, my main topic of conversation the thrust of everything i was saying by the way 866-392-98 the thrust of everything i was saying talked about quality of care this is an attack on our medical system oh everybody thinks it's wonderful all the left loves it the liberals love it everybody loves it it is a wonderful thing we're going to have socialized uh, medicine uh, Landrew from North Carolina, she said, it's shameful that we're not like France. I mean, you know, that, that we are going to have, uh, this, this medicine and everybody's going to be covered and all of that. And I said way back when, does anybody really believe, and there were a lot of people believe cause they reelected the guy. Does anybody really believe that we can decrease The amount of reimbursements coming from the government for Medicare, Medicaid, and hospitalization. Throw in health care that is now under the government's watch, so those decreases will now apply 
on all kinds of medical services, just not Medicare and Medicaid. Does anybody believe that that's not going to create thousands of doctors leaving and hundreds of hospitals closing around the nation? And does anybody believe that now that we have all of that going on, along with 40, 50 more million people covered, does anybody believe that your health care benefits are going to be the same? I mean, I don't believe there could possibly be an American on the face of the earth that could be that naive to believe that we're not going to suffer physically. That's why I said in 2016, no Democrat's going to win because everybody's going to know somebody that has suffered. Financial Issues, 866-300-9298. We'll be right back. 